Hi everyone, welcome back to Freak Sense TV. I'm your host Charlie Freak, and with me today is really it, this is this is my and I haven't even done it yet, and it's my favorite podcast of of all time. With me is Santos Bonacci. Uh, I guess depending on how you're looking at it, to my left or your right. And all the way from España, and Santos and I, of course, are in the, the deep center of Mexico. And then all the way from España is none other than Josh X. So at Santos Bonacci, Josh X, this is a potpourri of genius. And um, I am absolutely blessed to, to be in the middle of um, these two titans these uh, two geniuses and leaders of, of what the real truth community is all about. And that is real truth, which is whole truth, which is syncretism, which is the search for the one. So let's start. Um, first off, to, to let everybody know, Santos is uh, staying with us here in Mia Catlan, here in Mexico for... It was going to be about a week, but I think I pissed you off so much. You're you're leaving Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I, I I hug him so much. I I hug the heck out of him, and I think Santos is going. I got to get out of here. <laughs> He's not saying anything, so I I, I think it's true. Um, so Santos is with us. It has just been such a beautiful beautiful time. I hope you're really enjoying it here. Yep. Good. Good. For sure. And, and all of the animals here are not driving you crazy? No. Not at all. <laughs> nice. Nice. And then let's, uh, let's head over, over this flat earth. Let's take the, uh, the heaven cam. And we're heading over to Espana. And there's Josh. Josh, um, give us a quick update of uh, your recent move from the gray rain curtain of London down to, uh, to Spain. Yeah, this is... Uh a wonderful part of Spain. I'm in a special mountain area looking over a wonderful valley. Um, I needed some peace and some connection with the mother. Um, but this is a stepping stone in a big journey that's coming forth. And uh, it's just somewhere where I needed to be for now um, in this necessary evolution of myself. Beautiful. Beautiful. And um, uh, I know towards the, the end there, you were really getting frustrated with living uh, with the weather and everything else associated with uh, being in England, hey? Mm, it's not a nice place to be. You can see that the, the England is a central of commerce and uh, the way that they project the weather there is strictly for commerce. Um, and when you can see through the illusion, even the times and the skies are very, very much uh, predicted by the commerce hours, you know. I won't get into it now, but yeah, I needed to get out of that place because commerce is not for me. The money changes need to be away from me as far as they can be. Absolutely. And, you know, Josh, I, I will just quickly uh, interject. What Josh is talking about is that uh, during the daytime, it was cloudy virtually every single day. No chance to see the sun and have any benefits of the sun. And then as soon as the sun set, suddenly the clouds disappeared, the rain stopped, the skies opened up, and um, it became freezing cold and damp uh, at mm. nighttime. So just uh, a, sort of a horrific set of um, conditions. And in the summer, it would be the opposite, where the, the sun would be out during 9 to 5. And as soon as 5 struck, the clouds would come. <laughs> and, and then everybody who was in commerce would see the grey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah. Um, and I was saying to Santos today because this is the hottest day of the year so far here, and I said, "Boy, this is sure hot." And Santos said, "Net, no, no, not really." No. And I said, "Well, you got to remember, I'm from Canada. Anything above mm -hmm. zero, that's pretty warm." <laughs> Okay, so let's get into the show. Um, this is, of course, both of you know, a topic that I've been haranguing both of you with for quite a while now. And um, it's, I think it's just so, so, so important to talk about this. There are so many people on YouTube and within the truth community on YouTube that are saying, you know, hey, hey, man, I was, uh, I was a vegan. I tried this vegan thing. They're all on about this vegan thing. 
And uh, I tried it and you know what? It didn't do anything for me. In fact, I began to get sick and, and I got off of it and I'm back. I just think, you know, we're supposed to be meat eaters. I think, yeah, I think we're just supposed to be meat dairy eaters because I tried that vegan thing. So my, here, here's, here's how I see it guys. And then I just want uh, both of you to jump in and we'll just go through all of this. First off, the term vegan is kind of like flat earth. Somebody chose that term and they chose that term because it gets pe under people's skin and there's sort of a fight right away instead of a listening and learning and coming together period via flat earth. As soon as you mention the earth is flat, ooh, crazed demons run loose. And the same kind of thing has happened with veganism. And people don't even realize what veganism actually means. Um, and the word now is just four letters. And, and it's them, them's fighting words, it seems like, when, when you mention it. And really, for me, everything is about living and dying. In, in this physical plane that we are existing in, you can't deny it. You can call this the illusion, the Maya, all you want. But, but Santos has this nail perfectly. It's not really an illusion. It's the delusion. And we are delusional. And believe me, if you're eating... Uh, and supporting the raising and murder of sentient beings. You're delusional. I'm sorry to, to be the one to have to tell you this, but you are. It, it, it's just flat out wrong. And the, the delusion of the Maya is perpetrated against us. And when, when we go within ourselves, when we take uh, our, our mind back by stilling it, getting out of the beta brain waves and slowing things down, then we begin to connect with the right hemisphere of the brain, God's realm, and we begin to see the holistic truth of things. You don't kill to eat, and it makes no sense. You eat in your minds, if you asked a thousand people who, who exist within organized society, all 1,000 would tell you they eat to live. How can you justify murder and eating dead, rotting flesh to live? That makes no sense, it's insanity. So in this world, you are either living or dying. There is no middle ground unless you make it for yourself. So in this world, everything is either alkaline, which is living, or acidic, which is dying. And you have to choose in every moment. And it's not just the, the temple of the body, it's the temple of the mind. So when you choose negative thoughts, that's... That is, that is the acidic mind. And you're going to have all of the benefits, the negative benefits to choosing acidity of the mind. And when you eat anything that it is, is acidic, it's the same thing. Just do any experiment with any substance you want around your house. Just take some chloroform acid and just pour it on any kind of... Watch what happens when acid is applied to it. You will see that it, it breaks apart, destroys everything that comes in contact. That's what's happening when you're ingesting acidic food. And the same thing is happening, happening metaphysically within your mind. So you're either living or dying. And when you think that being a vegan is buying a Bill Gates brand hot dog or a Bill Gates brand a vegan burger and then you eat it on a white hamburger bun that's filled with yeast and you think that some magic is going to happen because you're vegan you're just flat out wrong you're 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 lost you're lost you're almost as as badly lost as are uh, the meat dairy and egg eaters and in many cases worse because you think you're on the right path and you're not so after that diatribe let me just uh, hand things over to you guys. So we'll start with uh, Santos here because um, I've been going on with, uh, about this for days with you. And so let's hear your thoughts on, on all of this. Well, first of all, people who uh, have been on a vegan diet for 10 years or something like that and, and they flunk because they ate processed food and, and it didn't work for them. Well, that's tantamount for me to someone who... Uh, goes to university for 10 years to learn, learn how to be a, pay to be a, educated to be a brain surgeon. And uh, at the end of the year, uh, 10 years, because he was a lazy ass and didn't do his study, uh, he flunks. And that would be tantamount to him going around saying, oh, that university, that, that university is a dud. It doesn't work. <laughs> Don't go there <laughs> because I didn't get my graduation. 
So you know, this this is this is how um, losers perpetuate the uh, philosophy of, of losing, um, and they love it. They love losing. They love giving something a try. You know, I tried veganism for two years and it nearly killed me. I had to go back to bum because I love my bum. Uh, well, you are what you were, it's done, aren't you? You know, when you it's uh, true. murder a traumatized, uh, exploited wow. animal that's been caged all its life for your lust, and then you eat its bum, well, then you will be that, and you look like that too. <laughs> all flesh eaters look like that to me. I don't know what they're looking at in the mirror, but when I look at them, they look like bums. You know, there's, there's unintelligence written all over their face. And they think they're smart because they've got big scotch noses and fat guts that are sticking out like this. And they're like, they're walking like this. Oh, you've got to have your meat. But the funny thing is they always say, my meat. No, I love my meat. Your meat? Uh, that bum belonged to the duck and the fish and the pig that you murdered. It's not your meat. <laughs> you know, so don't say my meat. <laughs> and by the way, um, per hundred calories, broccoli comes out twice, twice as uh, rich in protein than any meat. Uh, red meat will give you six point three grams so. per hundred calories, and broccoli will give you twelve point six. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll take the rabbit food uh, rather than. The bum. Thank you very much. So that's all I've got to say about the losers out there who uh, think that you know they're so special, and they go on their platforms and talk people how you've got to have your meat because you need your protein and you need your iron. Wow. Well, the iron is a, is the wrong isotope. The iron in the meat you can make steel sheds out of it, but yeah. the body will not absorb it. <laughs> yeah. And then they go to their doctors and they get a blood test. They test the um, is it the uh, the blood immunoglobin rather than the ferritin. Yeah. So they test the iron that's in their blood, yeah. which is low, rather than, um, or which is um, indicating low, rather than the ferritin which is in the tissue, right? So again, there's deceit there when you do your blood test because you're only measuring one billionth of the iron. And and by the way, to get iron. You don't have more iron, you have more copper, because copper enables the iron. You see, this is where, where do you begin with these people who tried their vegan diets, but it was, it was the worst diet in the world. Bum flesh is the best. So, good on them. You are what you eat. Yeah, let's see. Wow, thank you, Santos. So, uh, let's segue over to Josh now on his take on it. Um, I feel exactly the same. I think there's not really much more to be said apart from the meat is uh, the meeting of the the opposition, so the food and yourself. And this is why the word meal spells me all because you are becoming what you are eating. So if people are eating meat, it's actually not the correct terminology. It's flesh. Now, if we look at the word flesh, it's F less H. F is carbon six. We have less eight, eight, H is eight, which is the vibration. So the flesh is the matter that has less vibration. When you consume this, you are destroying your being um, as, a, as a natural part of the universal laws. So what we need to be doing is eating the meat of the fruit that bears the seed. Now, the seed is the most logical thing to be consuming within that flesh of the meat that we eat from the fruit because it contains life force. So when one consumes a fruit, which is the definition of a seed bearing uh, fruit, um, we eat this food, it goes through our digestive system and it can reciprocate life with the soil. So it's the only thing logical that makes any sense to any syncretist that one should be eating because it's the only thing that can sustain life. Yeah. Now, if you think logically, why would one uh, feed or supply food to an animal through commerce when it takes five, six years to produce this animal? Um, eating five or six years worth amount of fruit or food um, to then eat something that is death. It's illogical. But again, food is multidimensional. It has a, a big 
aspect of your thought process is your being and your makeup. Hence, junk food creates junk DNA, junk mind, and the junk being, um, and the logical thoughts. So I presume here we'll start talking about things from the basics, be as I see, and then we'll go through how you, one can enlighten themselves through food from a, a low form of transition to the highest form of awareness with food. Um, and uh, I don't know where you want to start with this, but yeah, there's, there's, there's no life in death. And uh, the only thing logical is something that contains the seed to consume. There, there's there's no, no other logic to it. That's right. And we, we're going to segue into that in just a moment here. What I wanted to just drive home is is that in, in this sort of uh, uh, new world experience of veganism, virtually everyone that I talk to um, that, that describes themselves as a vegan, I just, I ask them to describe to me their diet. And uh, Santos and I were talking about this with um, juices that are, are purchased from the store. Folks, if you're buying your juice from, from any kind of plastic bottle or cardboard you know, um, bottle or something like that within a, within a supermarket, you're not, drinking, you're not drinking real juice. And it is loaded with all sorts of things, including what they, what they love to use natural flavors, natural flavors and, and natural colors, which is just a very clever way of, of saying cancer, cancer, cancer. And the foods that a vegan is, is consuming are, that, that the average vegan is consuming are all sorts of things except one thing. And the one thing that all vegans must become is raw. Ah, man, raw. We, Santos and I were talking about this the other day as well with, um, with uh, again, the Egyptians had it right. So the father, Osiris, the mother, Isis, and the son Horus or Amen Ra. And in those names, Osiris, O S, is open, Iris is eye, open eye. Isis is the I, is the divine, and S is the sine wave. So it's the divine sine wave, but it's I S I S. So it's a double sine wave, which is the Taurus field, <laughs> which is magnetism, which of course is Isis, which is sacred Mary, the, the sacred feminine. And, and then the child born out of this is, is you know, uh, Amen-Ra. And Amen-Ra is a man-Ra. And if you want to live, you need to be Ra. And, the, you know, we'll, we'll touch on a little of this today. Santos has done this uh, again and again on his brilliant podcast with red shift energy, blue shift energy. All you have to do is just take a piece of litmus paper and take a look at your litmus paper, red shift below, blue shift above, and then uh, gold, white, green right in the very middle. So the whole purpose to life is to bring our two worlds, the mental temple, the temple of the higher mind together with the temple of the body. Two worlds becoming one. The eternal pine tree in, in harmonious balance between two worlds. And when we do that, that's green shift. And that is how do we achieve green shift on planet Earth, right? So plain T. They tell you in plain sight that it is a plane. It's a plane of the physical. That's what plain T is. T cross the fourfold nature of the human uh, form, you know, the head, the, the torso, the shoulders. There's your physical form, that's the T, and we are the physical form on the plane. And on this plane, you achieve green energy, which, you know, again, this is, these are all anagrams within, within each other, by the golden sun producing white light, and the plants take this white light and they create chlorophyll, which is green green shift, gold, white, producing green, red shift below the earth, take a look at the earth, dig it up, look at these rocks, look at the soil, it's red, reddish of the physical earth, and look up in the sky. It's all you have to do, just take a look up in the sky, and there you see blue, an ocean of blue above you. Blue shift above, red shift below, and in the middle, growing in this plane, is, is just everlasting green. And that is the whole point of this. And when you're eating this, this nouveau uh, cuisine of the vegans, there's, there's no life. 
you, you, all you've done is you've taken meat, dairy, and eggs and replaced it for synthetic food. And guess what? If you remember the Charlton Heston movie from, from the 70s, Soylent Green, what are they putting in, in the food? Soylent Green is human! They'll get to that. I, I think they're already finding in McDonald's burgers or something that there's human DNA and, and, and whatnot. It's all just a big game and a joke to them to get you out of your free will to consent to this crap. So when you're eating these processed hot dogs and hamburgers and donuts, that they're, they're vegan though, all you're doing is you're replacing the horror of meat, dairy, and eggs with the horror of synthetic processed foods. You haven't gained anything. Life is live. Life is live. To be alive, that's raw. And raw is in the living. And the living is green shift. Red shift, blue shift, green shift. So with that, now let's, let's go first back over to Josh then Santos and let's now talk about the B as I C basics of, of uh, food, real food, mete, and living. Over to you, Josh. Okay, so I'll go back to when you were saying about the, the say for example, the orange juices, when people are going to the shops Ooh. for convenience. Again, the word con is there, the confectionery, the convenience. You're having a, a, a bottle of orange juice, say if it's 100% pure, it's been pasteurized. Now, the pasteurization process kills all the nutrients within that food itself anyway, so it has an absorption rate within the body. But again, the word there phonetically is for us to all hear, is past your eyes. Now, this is not something you should ever be consuming. Um, so again, there's no life in the boiling up of any anything at all, because once it can sit on the shelf for a certain period of time, it won't degrade, and your body finds it's very hard to make anything of itself. Yeah. So just because, I'll touch this as well, because a lot of people think that because something's acidic on, on a litmus paper, that is acidic forming within the body. And this isn't the case. Things that are acidic forming with the, within the body are things that the body cannot recognize and make itself. So something like a lemon that would be very acidic on a litmus paper, exactly. when it's ingested within the body, this is easily assimilated. And the word lemonade doesn't actually originate from a fizzy drink. It originates from the lemon having so much electric charge within it that it can aid oneself when one's feeling sick or ill or has any ailments. And this is the thing that we need to be perceptive to. And food will always carry you to certain levels of perception depending on how far you're willing to go with the food. So um, I don't know how we should touch it right now. Yeah. Again, but there's very, there's, there's very many multidimensional aspects to food. If we look at the word food itself, it has the F, which is the matter man looking at d which is form okay so it's the matter looking at form so the food that we do consume is exactly how we look at our form in this physical so what santos was saying earlier about people looking like pigs um i truly without disrespect to any man on earth i see these pig eaters yep. and they look like animals you know they project themselves as animals and they really have this lower form of consciousness and lack of awareness. Um, so, yeah, the, I mean, we'll touch things, for example, if I can just quickly go forward with some things. So a microwave. A microwave is not something that we should ever use. It's obviously agitating particles through a nuclear process which irradiates the food useless. Again, heating food reduces acidity, whether you do it in a, in a nice way, in a pan or a copper pan, It'll yeah. still take some, it's on a pH level at seven down to about four. So again, you're not actually on the okay align. You're reducing the food's acidity, acidity down. And this will cause discomfort for somebody that's on a, on a raw diet. Yeah. If you're transforming or, or taking a transition from a standard Western diet and you're willing to give this veganism a go, obviously it only comes in the holistic form of food. Don't be trapped by the industry. Because anything in the industry is convenience. Yeah. Now, the word itself is trying to express itself to your conscious mind to be able to see in this realm. Um, so the best thing you can do is stay away from anything in the shops and realize if it grows from the ground, it's sand. And in this holistic form, 
is the best. But if people are coming from a standard Western diet, it's great to be able to cook the food, to enjoy the flavors, to be able to move away from the meat because the meat doesn't actually offer any flavor. It doesn't offer anything that's nice. If you were to see a table full of wonderful fruits and vegetables or an animal just slaughtered in front of you, there'll be no salivation. There'd be no taste buds that wanted to taste absolutely anything to do with that animal. And if it was, it was just a persona trying to make it up for the illusion in their head to, to make sense of it. You know, so first it would be great for somebody to cook their food, to enjoy the flavors, and then secondary move on or transition through to a semi-raw diet, maybe uh, a salad and then use potatoes as a sauce because the digestive system feels kind of full on a standard diet, you know. Yes. And as we progress through the fruitarian or, or, or the fruit or the raw diet, your digestive system loses inflammation and starts to reduce in size. And then it doesn't feel so full. And then if you continue on the raw diet, the digestive system is very free flowing. And uh, when you, for example, are eating raw and have a potato, for example, you'll feel the density sat in the stomach. Um, so, so what I think I'd like to touch on, I know it's quite, le qu uh, quite diverse um, and moving subjects slightly, is the fact that what we need to be aware of within the food that we are consuming, how the acidity levels are actually happening with these digestion processes. So the modern science will say to people that there are slow, fast and medium carbohydrates. And they'll say sugar is, is, is a fast acting carbohydrate. Pasta, for example, is a slow, uh, and, and rice would be a slow to a medium. Um, these are all wrong. Um, there's no such thing as a fast, slow, or medium carbohydrate. It's how long it takes the body to break it down and become itself. So it's not the food source itself, it's the digestion process. Now, anything other than fruit in the digestion process is actually acid forming within the body so a fruit will be in and out of your system within say two hours um, in its holistic form and not juiced um, and when we cook that food it would stay between six and maybe 18 hours and the reason why is because it's formed acid within the body and now the body has to find some sort of way to break this down so when you cook the food you're removing digestive enzymes from that food that's right so the body so the body has to make them up, which is acid forming. And in that process of acid forming, the alkaline buffer from the body has to be introduced. Now, this is found in the bone minerals. So it actually depletes the bone minerals slowly over time uh, from its mineral stores. And uh, this is why so many people in the Western diet have uh, chronic illnesses, yeah. because your body can only use so many minerals within the bones um, until it's fully depleted and then chronic illnesses will set in. Now you can transition onto a plant-based, vegan or holistic diet, even a raw food diet. Um, and depending on the level of, uh, let's say conscious eating, you'll get a conscious healing. But somebody who's got a very big depletion could be on a, on a say a vegan diet or even a raw food diet and not find healing within themselves um, because, because of the depletion. And then this is where juicing would come into play because one cannot eat uh, the amount of minerals that they would need to consume via the mouth. So the juicing reduces the insoluble fiber uh, and allows the body and the digestive system time to rest um, and then remineralizing the body over time. And once this has rose the minerals back to a certain level, there's no chronic disease anymore. Um, so one's got to be very careful of, um, you know, like the industry um, and as as eating is a form of awareness, don't jump in at the deep end. There's, there's no need to jump in and become a raw foodist overnight because there's something called candy to die off. Um, and when you jump from a standard diet, say, to a vegan diet or a, or a, a whole food raw diet, you'll find that the candy that's left within the body will start to die off and this will give you so many symptoms um, if you just look at the symptoms yourself you'll find they're flu-like you know all the lymphatic systems as well tonsillitis bad belly diarrhea 
all of these things. And this has uh, put a lot of people off on their transition because they feel unwell, but it's just the detox um, that's happening within the body naturally. Um, so, yeah, there's one thing that people kind of need to be aware of, and um, there's no need to rush these things. But naturally, as you progress within the diet, you'll see that the body will find certain aspects of uh, eating the old things uncomfortable as it progresses on this journey. Um, personally, myself, um, I only like, uh, and fruit is, is vast, you know, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, these sort of things. I like to stay away from nightshades as well. Um, but um, including in, in my diet, I, I have to remove and have removed over time legumes, nuts, seeds, grains, um, all of these things, because as my awareness grew, um, you know, these things are basically nitrogen replenishers for the soil, um, and they're not really a food, um, and in my opinion, um, these have been uh, commercialized and grown as a slave food, um, because uh, obviously keeping slaves ignorant to the truth. Um, through food is, is a great way to uh, be able to control consciousness here. Um, as I said, the fruit bearing seed is the only thing that makes logical sense for consumption. Um, but again, um, in its life form, will create life. Um, anything cooked, anything in a destructive way will destroy the body um, and not allow the reciprocation between the being. You know? It's a well, great way to open. Yeah, that's brilliant, Josh. And thank you so much for all of that, because everything you said, that is 100% factually sound. That is absolutely the truth. And something that I think is very important for people to understand is that in Genesis 129, now, now you consider this, this is Genesis chapter one. So this is, this is the beginning of the Bible. Um, it tells you what your food is. And it says, let, let all of the, the fruits of the uh, seed-bearing plants, the trees, um, be thy food. And the entire rest, rest of the Bible is a series of allegories to kill uh, the beast within you, the false Saturn for the true Saturn, wearing the, the purple crown of the awakened third eye versus the crown of Kronos, time, linear time, and I'm in such a rush, and so I got a slap on a couple of vegan hot dogs with the cheapest oil I could find in the store because money's hard to come by, and I'm in a hurry, so I cranked up that stove to high temperature, and that oil is just a cooking away, and those hot dogs were ready in six minutes, and that's Saturn, the fallen man. So oil Oil, my brothers, um, have you got anything to add on oil? Because it would be good to be able to take um, the things that you say and then bring it to a logical format for your viewers. So have you got anything to say about oil in this format and why it's not necessarily good for consumption? Well, I, I've got a lot to say about it, but I'm going to pass that over to, to Santos. And I know, and you're an expert on it. So go ahead, Santos. Well, um, the only oils I try to have is... Um, like coconut oils and stuff like that that come, um, I know it's processed, so it's a, it's a process, that's why. You, know, you want to avoid anything that's processed. Uh, so um, I would say the raw food diet obviously is the uh, correct diet, but um, jumping to it from a standard diet is a tricky thing. This is why a lot of people are having trouble. The, um, the detoxing and the, uh, the side effects from from this may be years in the making. And the reason being, Dr. Sebi explained this very well, is that because people have got, they're full of parasites. And so before you change your diet, first thing we'll do is to uh, address the parasite situation. So um, parasites uh, will linger even if you change your diet drastically. You know, it, you, you're continuing to feed those parasites. So they will live unless you do what he calls a, uh, a dry fast, and which would absolutely eliminate the parasites. It resets the body and you can start again in a new diet. So 
Yeah, it's, it's very tricky, but um, the ultimate diet, as you said, is the Garden of Eden diet. I like to use that expression instead yeah. of vegan because vegan has been weaponized as well now. You know, it's just, it's too limited. And that's not what I am. I'm not vegan by definition. I'm a whole food, plant-based, aiming to be frugivore because that is the true diet of mankind, fruit and raw. You don't have to cook fruit, you know. So... Yeah, the Garden of Eden diet is uh, is what I would call it, um, even though it's it's allegorical. Uh, it is still harking to back to a time when mankind was uh, much more sensible and much more conscious and aware and, oh. and knew what the diet was. You know, they didn't get confused like a horse. Animals don't get confused. Only humans get confused. I mean, a horse con consistently eats grass. Even if there's no grass in the paddock and it sees mice and rodents running around, it doesn't go chasing them to eat them because it knows that that is not its food. And yet we see squirrels eating, so we, have, we want their food, nuts. And we see uh, lions eating murdered animals, so we want their food. We want all the animals' food except for what our true intuition tells us is fruit because you're not killing the tree. The tree continues to live forever, or as long as it span is, and you just pluck it. It gives its fruit, you pluck it off, you don't have to add salt, you don't need knives and forks, you don't need plates, you don't need anything, you just need a hand and a mouth. You go pluck, and you've got all the minerals, vitamins, all the nourishment you ever need, and it comes, it goes straight through your digestion, your body knows what to do with it. Once you eat a, a slice of meat, you put the, uh, the body into chaos, it, it just doesn't know what to do. So the, everything starts fermenting and putrefying it's rather than digesting. Yep. Gross. Cancer. Gross. Mm -hmm. it's gross. So this is why the, the, the fruit, if, if man was, if he wanted to put logic to that, the fruit would naturally drop itself. Uh, so there's nothing calming anything at all with the fruit. It would just naturally go into the soil, replenish the soil, reciprocation um, and again when you touched on the parasites um, the thing I'd like to bring with the parasites is um, when one consumes meat the meat is so toxic to the human body and does not digest that the parasites are actually needed to consume the flesh within the body and this is why there is a, a, a systematic play with parasites and meat consumption because the body cannot do anything with the meat so the meat is so the parasites are there to consume the meat within the body, and they're actually doing you a favour while you consume meat. Um, the same with yeast, you know, the the yeast is, is bacteria which says why yeast, which is choose yeast. So the instruction is trying to choose the yeast, um, but we must be aware that yeast is candida, and this is cancer. So when one consumes the yeast itself, the candied is there to eat the things that are, example, sugar, because sugar feeds yeast. Now, the sugar in a processed format, not in a fruit format, is um, is not absorbable by the body again. So then the yeast is feeding, the yeast is feeding off this to actually save your life. So all of these things that have been put in the matrix are actually such perfectly designed because without these things, yeah, when you're consuming these things here with illogical, um, you know, consciousness, as you look at the word diabetes and you translate it, it says through idiocy. Now, one is an idiot if they don't know how to eat. Because one of the basic functions to your existence here is consuming food to reciprocate the physical body in life. Um, and what I like to do here is, is touch on the subject slowly because this this whole holistic food thing is so vast, I tend to, to drift off in different types of thoughts. That's why I picked up the, the fat thing there. So to me, um, you know, fats added to food, it's not in its holistic form. So it's a concentrated form of a substance within the fruit. And in that sense, the body does not know how to digest this. Thus, being acid forming, and causing the depletion of the minerals within the body um, and not putting you on the all care line. Um, and this is where destruction happens again. Um, uh, and I'd like to just keep doing and interjecting like this, if that's okay with you guys, because my, my thoughts I see 
uh, are so vast that I, I don't know where to go with it sometimes. Okay. I'm just talk well, one of the things, again, the, the human body is, is um, this is from, from, in particular, Santos's teachings. This is um, probably the greatest, the greatest gift that, that I've received because it brings you to the center of, of all things, the syncretic monadic point of, of all things. And what you see is that everywhere, and it, it, nothing, it's not limited to the Bible and any kind of Western traditions, which of course the Bible is not a Western tradition, it is very much uh, an Eastern creation, but all of these ancient spiritual texts, they all speak to the fact that everything in creation, the night sky, which, which we, the study of we call astrology, or the study of um, the earth, so, you know, plant biology. Everything around us, when we begin to look at it, is essentially an anagram or is an allegory for us and for the, for the working of the human body. And the human body, of course, is two parts to it. There's the temple of the body and the temple of the mind. And when you start looking at these things, it's incredible because everything is describing you. And that's the incredibleness of, of astrology in the night sky. One can't be stolen from you and it can't be obfuscated from you. They try to, of course, because they'll lie and lie and lie and they belittle uh, what a true astrologer is and what the, the value of, of true readings are um, into some 999, 995 uh, gift shop uh, parcel that has you know, no bearing on the truth whatsoever. But in that, what it's doing for us, in plain sight, if you just, it just even just an untrained mind, long enough staring up at counter space, um, you're going to get that connection to God because that's what God wants is for us to, is to connect to, to his creation. And so when we look up at the night sky, we'll begin to intuitively receive all of these messages. And what we see is that it's teaching us about us and especially what's inside of us because we can't see what's inside of us. And any time, this is where, this is the brilliance of the Canaanites. Every time we can't see something, oh, they come running to our aid, don't they? Science, modern science, because what is modern science specialized in? Because they go where we can't go ourselves. Why? Because we can't confirm the bullshit that they spew to us with their bindings. So yeah, we've gone inside. Yeah, we go inside cells all the time. It's a special camera, you know, costs a lot of money. We've, we've got it, trust us, we've got it. Those dinosaur bones, we got them. <laughs> They're not the ones in the museum, of course, because, you know, they would, you know, decay into dust. So we, those are plastic, but trust me, we got them. Yeah, they're way beneath the earth and they're all, but we got them, trust me. Yeah, trust us. It's always trust us with what we can't see. And that's what the night sky teaches. That's what plant biology teaches. That's what the workings of mother earth, currents and tides and wind, it's all teaching us how the body works. And that's always to achieve balance. It's always to achieve homeostasis. It's just this constant ebb and flow within, within the body to achieve balance and harmony. And that's the beauty of the natural sciences that, that we have all around us, is that they're constantly teaching us about what we can't see about ourselves. And when I was doing all of my research for the podcast that I did, that cancer is a hoax and wake up and waking up to eternal life through becoming a frugivore, um, the, what I found was, was just staggering. And what I found is that not only metaphysically is the human temple controlled by the third ventricle of the brain, but the endocrine system is controlled by the third ventricle of the brain. The autonomic nervous system is controlled by the third ventricle of the brain. And what you find if you go to a science book about the third ventricle of the brain, it, well, there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah we looked. There's the optic nerve goes through there, but there's nothing there. So we don't write a lot about it because there's nothing there. Yeah, no, no, nothing. Everything runs through the third ventricle of the brain and God's glands, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus below. And what 
what do those three master glands do and create within the body? Well, there are three, which is a trinity. And the pineal gland is, is electrically based, it is masculine, it is golden. The pituitary gland is feminine based, it is uh, negatively charged, it's magnetic, it's the, it's the milk to the pineal gland's honey. And you begin to look at this and you say, well, what, what's connected to these things? Well, the Eda and the Pingala. The Eda and the Pingala run, Eda from the pituitary gland all the way down to the male testicles or for the woman, the ovaries. And the Pingala connects to the pineal gland, pineal Pingala, Eda, pituitary. And they run down the whole span of the body. Now, here's another interesting point. Coming, coming back up the body is the vagus nerve or the pneumogastric, pneumo being lungs, gastric being, you know, the stomach. And they connect, they run, it's a tree of life within the body. So if you see the spine as the trunk of the tree and you just look at where all these capillaries of, of the pneumogastric nerve, the Santos says it so well, the vagabond nerve, because it just vagabonds, uh, you know, all over the body. But it creates, it creates the shape of a tree with the spine being the trunk. It's the tree of life within you. And, and it runs all the way down once again to the, the base of the root chakra and it comes all the way back up. And once it crosses the blood-brain barrier here, it, it curves. And as it curves through the blood-brain barrier, it creates a cross, the crucifixion. And, of course, this is all relates to the chrysomon, the necessity for the controlled spasm of the of the orgasm the the goal the generation of gold within us the most powerful generation of gold within us has to be controlled because we need to build up those charges for when we need to transfer the chrism oil over a thousandfold over the blood brain barrier and up into heaven upon earth where we need to get it to so the pneumogastric nerve, where does it connect up into? Oh, well, uh, pituitary gland and pineal gland. Wow. And so now we take a look at what secretions are coming out of the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and the hypothalamus. Well, the pineal gland is dominated by something called melatonin. And the pituitary gland produces four principal um, sacred secretions, but in particular the serotonin, and out of the hypothalamus comes the dopamine. And this is what I call the three wise men inside of us. This is the, these are from the east, from the star of the east, that come to us physically in the physical realm. The physical three wise men of Zoroaster and the, and the Magi, the magicians of the East, exist within us if you allow them to. And so even if you go to these institutions that are, that are absolutely controlled like, like Harvard and the Harvard Medical School, they've got massive studies done on what it takes to, to generate massive, copious amounts of melatonin serotonin and dopamine within the body. And guess what those things are? Stilling, silencing the mind via meditation, access to sunlight, and an alkaline diet. And eating of alkaline foods, stilling and silencing the mind and access to sunlight. Wow, green shift, green shift. Green shift, ding, 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 pull the lever on your little slot machine, ding, 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 seven, 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 green, 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 right in the middle, seven, right in the middle, green shift. It tells you everywhere we go in society. And what are the benefits? What are the benefits of melatonin, serotonin, and dopamine? If you don't know this, if you've never even heard of these master glands within you, or if you've never heard of the secret secretions, melatonin, serotonin, and dopamine, then you're not really alive. You can't really say that you're a living being or an angel of God. You really can't say these things because that's the essence of you. And if you don't understand the basic essence of you, you're not really alive. You're a victim and you're being dragged through the mud by people that, that hate you, 
that despise you because you're golden and you're special beyond description. And they despise you more because you allow your, your brilliant, precious, angelic self to be treated like shit. And you eat shit and you look like shit and you act like shit. And I'm not the one saying this. Talk to 999 people out of a thousand off the streets and what will they tell you about their life? It's shit. Uh, you know, how do you think you look right now? I, I honestly, I think I look like shit, 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 you know, and they, they use these words all the time. I'm fucked and my, and, and people are full of shit. My life is shit. Why? Because the, where does the, where is the essence of us? Where is it located? It's down in the root Muladhara chakra. Where's the root or Muladhara chakra located within our super highway within us? That's that's the anus, the exit for for all the crap that's within us, and that's our reproductive organs. That's why we use all of these adjectives to describe our life because they're all based in the Muladhara. We're all down there in in the root. The basis I see is full of shit because that's where the average person has put themselves. Because somebody else told them, sure, exactly, and it's unfair because it starts at birth, but still, there's an implied consent involved in all of this. And again, if you don't understand melatonin, serotonin, and dopamine, you don't know yourself. And copious amounts of these things, Josh was saying earlier that when you transition from a solid diet and you start going to just a juicing diet, all the inflammation comes out of all of your arteries. It, it, your whole body is massively changing inside. And then of course you see it on the outside. You know, in the Austin Powers movie, they made fun of, you know, fat bastard who went from 400 pounds to 120 pounds and he was just all, all you know, skin, hanging skin and stuff like that. Well, they're just having fun with you again because that's really what's happening inside of you. That's what it looks like inside of you for a time until you're regenerating all of your cells again and you just rebuild yourself beautifully from, from the inside out. But again, all one of the most powerful things that melatonin does, as does serotonin and dopamine, is that they absolutely control your, your craving for food. They regulate... They regulate these are circadian rhythms are, are not with the with melatonin and the pineal gland are not just limited to daytime, nighttime. I need to work, 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 and now I need to sleep, sleep, sleep. It's everything. It's when to eat, when not to eat. And when you have copious amounts of melatonin flowing within you, your body is an intuitive genius and it knows exactly what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, when to stop. And you're not constantly craving foods because the holy mind begins to take over within you instead of the, the body being dragged along for the ride. And the mind is getting you hungry for knowledge and wisdom and gnosis. And that's the craving. That's like, that's like with, with Josh. Josh and I get on, get on the phone and he's like, and we're just talking a thousand miles an hour and Colleen's just listening to us laughing and laughing. Because it's just like Josh says two words and I go, oh yeah, 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 and I'm 100 miles an hour about something else that was downloaded to me, and then Josh is like, exactly, and that's what it's like. You just get passion for the life, passion for living. That's the food, and Santos can tell you so many passages. Ezekiel, I think, is 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 a great chapter five, and Ezekiel. Is, is a great passage. And it, the Bible itself is making fun of people who are saying, but God, but God, I'm eating, I'm eating good foods. I'm eating lentils. Oh yeah, more shit. Would you like me, would you like me to get more fertilizer for your shit? Because the mete is the mana and the mana from heaven is within you. That's the chrism oil. That is our seminary fluids within us. This is the knowledge and the wisdom. This is ultimately where we're heading to is, is, this, is this breatharian uh, diet. I know we all, all three of us are, are, are working towards that. And, and you, you survive on the purple bliss, the purple rain and the purple bliss of God. No pleasure and pain, just eternal bliss. So I just was crazy there for a while. Josh, let's go back to you. I was going to say, between us three here, for your viewers, 
can we bring forth something logical and simple and basic for everybody to be able to just make a small change and to be able to see logic um, in their future um, by understanding what we should be doing to get to this point. Um, because I know a lot of people would understand what you said, but there's going to be a lot of people that would not. Now, if we give them some keys today that they can go and grow with, then I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that are going to you know, grow from this, this little chat we're going to have today. Um, obviously, we've touched on a, a few things together um, that might be quite advanced. Um, but if you see anything that we could help people with um, on a basic level of food, then I think maybe between us, we should help project that for some people to see. Um, is there anything you'd like to say, Santos? Because I don't want to go off on a drift before you've had anything to say. No, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll uh, talk after you. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to ask, uh, Charlie, being the, uh, the host of this show, maybe, so I can find a subject to talk? Because, again, it's so vast and the knowledge is so big that... I don't really know where to start for your viewers. You well, know? And so. that's, that's why, thanks Josh, that's why I interjected with the third ventricle of the brain and in particular the, the pineal pituitary and the glands and the hypothalamus. These, these three sacred secretions and the endocrine system, that's all it does. It just, it's just constantly producing just a couple of drops here at this time and a couple. It's brilliant. It's just brilliant. We have no idea what's going on, but it's just absolutely brilliant. That's what it's doing constantly, just topping up here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All it asks for is something to work with. That's all you have to do is just give it something. And it requires life to work with. So, so really to start with, Josh, just, just really help everyone. If you want these three, these three uh, kings from the Orient, from the East, to spread all of this wisdom w within you, you just have to let them do their thing. And to allow them to do the thing, they need to come into living. They can't exist in acid. So let's just, as we transition their diet from, from uh, completely solid to completely liquid and, or completely raw, um, and becoming transitioning to a frugivore, let's just talk about these simple foods and these simple processes that they can do uh, morning, noon, and night to replace the crap that they're eating now. So we're talking that your vegan processed food, you go to Whole Foods, oh, it's a big store. Oh no, it's the good supermarket because it's Whole Foods. But they're just selling you, for the most part, processed foods. And they're calling it Whole Foods. And that processed is not a whole food. And that 90% of what Whole Foods sells is processed food. So if you're shopping at Whole Foods and thinking you're gonna be healthy, you're not, because it's processed foods. And a lot of people, when they go to these stores, even if they're paying for the high quality products, the illusions there for them as, as the salt, for example, would not be a form of absorbable salt. It would yeah. be more than likely a table salt, which is primarily one third glass, one third sand and one third salt ground up bleached and then given to mass given to the masses so say that um, say that again now we we all three of us know this but say this again so the audience can hear that your average table salt which is what they're you that's what josh is saying this is what they're using in your processed foods when you're not looking this is what they do anywhere you can't go they're lying to you or they're trying to kill you you need to understand this so in a processed food they're using table salt so josh Three parts, tell us those three parts again to table salt. One third glass, one third sand, and one third salt. Ground up and bleached and put as a process, well, put as a salt or sold very cheaply for the masses. Um, this is causing a lot of problems within the beings that are around us, but the illusion is that is cholesterol. Um, so I'd like to start on saying that nobody in the world has ever died of high cholesterol. People only die of not enough cholesterol. Um, so what's happening is they're ingesting this salt, it's going into the bloodstream, and it's scratching the arteries. So what cholesterol is doing, actually I should explain what cholesterol is. Cholesterol is the most important thing in your body. It rebuilds every new cell. 
So when this salt is scratching the arteries inside, cholesterol, cholesterol is actually saving your life. And over time, as you can continue to consume the table salt, it will continue to scratch the arteries, thus continue cholesterol buildup to save your life from bleeding internally. Now, the doctors out there give you something called statins, which blocks cholesterol being produced by the liver. So what they're doing is stopping the body healing itself by producing cholesterol because one's consuming table salt, but those two are never interacting within the genius of the modern day scientists or the modern day doctors. So it's very important that we know that the food that we are consuming is really virtuously done by ourselves. And if one's a study of virtuous uh, behavior and the virtues, one of them is diligence. Now, to be diligent is to be able to prepare and do things yourself, because in doing that, you will know what goes into that food, and then that will create life within you. So by not moving with the virtues and sinning, you will find that sloth is there. And by being sloth, the universal energies will put something in that way which would be, example, the table salt or anything that's inside of these foods to then damage you for your awareness to see. And then if your awareness does not pick up on these things, it's just another cycle until the awareness and the consciousness can be, you know, figured out and finding the self. So yeah, the salt is a trap. Flavorings or natural flavorings is another one. Um, even yeast extract. Um, these things are just MSG. Um, and MSG is monosodium glutamate, and this is an excitotoxin to the brain, which overstimulates the brain, and in doing so, it kills off brain cells and makes one dumber and dumber and dumber. Um, so that's another sin. Um, but it's really interesting when you start to perceive um, the virtues, because if I was to recommend anything, it's very important that one does study the virtues and acts virtuously because he who governs himself virtuously will be like the pole star with everything revolving around him in that state of awareness of self. And this is key because to, to know the self is to be with consciousness, you know? So food is, is, is key. So we've touched on cholesterol and we've touched on salt and we've touched on MSG. Now these things here are putting crisps for children. Um, they're putting, you know, the, the vegan food, which is uh, corn, for example, or the, the micro-processed protein, yeah. uh, the mushrooms, all of these things here are not food. And uh, if one thinks they can eat these things and become anything other than uh, a, a slower form of consciousness, it's not going to happen um, at all for anyone. So if somebody wanted to replace uh, this salt, should be ingesting Himalayan salt, or some sort of sea salt, you know? And these things are absorbable by the body. As salt is tasted through your skin when you sweat, it is actually the sine wave of all your physical. Um, and it's an important thing to be able to have all, all the minerals, you know? And as a part of my growing, uh, ready for the season, I have a couple hundred, you know, seeds ready, but I do feed them with Himalayan sea salt as it has 83 minerals. And the flavors that come out from this food is key and incredible and thus opening up more inactive DNA within the body and allowing the body mind to function at such higher rates than it can with normal processed food. Now, I'd like to touch that because it sparked a thought that all commercially grown food is actually grown with three minerals, just NPK. Um, and this doesn't really open up uh, the, the DNA or the amino acid coding within the body to its full potential, again, because it's not due diligence. Um, and one who grows within himself would grow the food himself to create that uh, the balance within the being. Um, this can go as deep and as far as, as, it, as it wants to. You know, I, I don't know when or where to go with this, but again, um, they got us eating with forks, knives, spoons, um, and stainless steel. Um, this is magnetic and causes a big shock within the avatar or the electromagnetic being. Um, it's one has to eat with a spoon or a fork, it should be silver because of his non-magnetic nature. Um, but the highest form of eating would be with your hands. And this creates a bond within the food, within your being. Um, and this is the highest form of, you know, eating within the food. Now, now isn't that funny? Isn't that funny, Josh, that, uh, 
eating with your hands, unfortunately, is construed as the lowest uh, form of intelligence. And it mm -hmm. connects uh, this theory of evolution and that we evolved from monkeys. And so ooh, ooh, people don't like to, to do that. They like to be civilized. I like to be bloody civilized, don't I? So I eat with a fork and knife because I like to be civilized. I'm no longer a monkey. Right? So everything in organized society is designed cleverly at levels that we can't even begin to fathom. Take us away from the simple, simple, holistic truth. Eating with your hands creates a bond with this metta from heaven. Even if it's a lower form, a lower vibration, because it's in the physical form, it's a lower vibration, but it's creating a beautiful everlasting bond it shows respect these are all virtues this is all virtuous virtue 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 and uh, but we don't do that. water everything in nature is basically primarily water now uh, we're all aware of the you know dr emoto's experiments with water yes um, thoughts and emotions are very important to the food um so if you have someone preparing the food for you for you with a negative uh, vibration uh, even if the food was grown in a, in a wonderful state, it, it will be changed just by the thoughts and emotions within that being. So I only prepare my own food. I will only eat the food that I prepare. And um, when I prepare my food, I like to wash it um, two times. I wash it with bicarb and lemon juice or bicarb and vinegar and then clean water after this. Um, the reason why I do so, because if you just run... Uh, vegetables under the tap when you haven't grown them yourself but again we have chemtrail residue um, that the 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 pesticides out there are actually uh, designed to not be water soluble uh, so they can stay on the plants during the rain um, so if people are washing their food thinking that they're washing off the pesticides just by washing it with tap water um, it's not it's not doing so this will lower your vibration and um, it's one thing that people have got to be aware of on a higher plane of thought because or a higher eating format if one's going out or you know accepting food from other people due to uh let's say thoughts of ego because one doesn't want to upset someone by being honest and they're eating the food then this is only going to cause harm within the system and quite rapidly and degrade the system so it's quite important we stay diligent and virtuous in our consumption of food as we should do within life you know um it's key it's very very key um yeah, so if there's anything else we touch, but we carry on and then we'll touch something else after. Yeah, well, when you go to restaurants, you're ingesting the energy of the cook as well. And the frying pans, mm -hmm. if, this, if this is a uh, flesh cooking restaurant that has vegan options, it's not vegan because they will do your stir fry where butchered, murdered, exploited, animals have been it's a holocaust it's totally a holocaust i do not go to restaurants that um you know have vegan options it's just ridiculous it's like you know um, uh, the mafia saying um uh, i'll give you the the the, the cheap uh kill i'm going to kill you and it won't cost you you know a million dollars because i'm a businessman it's um it's no deal you know so if I do go to restaurants, I'll make sure I like the place, you know, and it's raw and organic and vegan, those three. So, but um, the other thing is people feel that uh, they, they, uh, they're vegans as well when they, their partners are not. And, and, and say their children, for instance. Uh, so they're cooking flesh for their children or their partner because they love them, etc. And as if that the particles of the cooked flesh is not going to permeate the house and infest them. Even when you're kissing your partner, if they're a flesh eater, it, it, it cancels out your veganism. There's so many, there's so many dynamics and, and uh, uh, variables and, and, and things that cancel out all your good work if you think you're doing a great job but by saving the animals and be becoming vegan um, you, you've got to think twice like you said there washing washing your food with just water it's just not good enough because the pesticides are still there and the energy of the individual you'll need something like bicarb soda to <laughs> wash away that energy and bring back the 
you know, the electric magnetic energy of the fruit come back because it's suppressed by the by the sprays that they put on them and and that's deliberate so that we ingest it so it comes through to us you know so you've got to treat those plants as well as well you know you've got to wash them properly and clean them and take away the energy of all the the people who don't have good intentions on those plants could we touch bread maybe because bread is something that fills up a lot of vegans um i'll first off saying that bread is to be read and christ fed the multitude of one loaf of bread because to be read is to be conscious and consciousness is jesus christ the son um in an expression so he fed everybody with his consciousness uh, and not a loaf of bread um, That's right. bread is, in the bible it does say unleavened bread which is not yeast bread again the uh, flour is a process it has been bleached and it is a dead form if anybody thinks that something in their hand is a flower format is going to bring life to them mixed with water and then cooked up it it won't but again if someone wants to satiate the physical then there's no harm in taking balance and, and experiencing the physical for what it is but again not allowing the mind and the thoughts to uh, interact and create ill will within yourself and doing something um, for that experience is not something you should ever crush yourself with um, but again it is a growth thing but bread is very dangerous it is uh, the standard diet of our nans. Bread, milk, dairy, meat, and they still lived till they were 80 or 90. Mm. Uh, let me tell you, the new diet is not even anything that is food. So if we can understand that we've been poisoned from birth and we can still live till we're 80 or 90, that's nearly 10% of the life in the Bible. If you were able to reciprocate, and create life within by eating alive food, becoming what you are, which is live foods becoming alive, you would live way past the ages of what we have been seeing in the Western world. 900, you know, just exactly, by being- Exactly, do, do the math, do the simple math, folks. And again, probably a thousand years. Uh, and 900 years out of the right hemisphere of your brain and 100 years out of the left hemisphere of your brain. Dying brain, dying brain, redshift, dying brain, dying, 10%, 10% of our, they are, they are poisoning our minds and our bodies from the moment, the moment that we are birthed into commerce and, and we still live to, to, but now what's happening guys is, and this is just unbelievable how you have all of these, it, 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 people are just so obsessed with consuming, mass consumption, the, con the consuming of the physical realm, and consume, consume. What's happening with all of these rock stars that are dying at, at, at 58 and 62 from massive coronaries, and nobody bats an eye? So this is a person that has millions and millions of dollars and is living above it all on the cliffs of Malibu, and it's just a fabulous life, it's just fabulous. And they're dead at 58. Yeah, well, I think that's what happened. Yeah, that sounds sounds about right. What? What? I, it sounds well, like I were born sorry. in 63, making uh, 57, Young. 57 this year. 57. I feel like I'm two. I feel like I'm eight years old. I just don't know anything yet, and I got a long way to go. Sorry, Josh. If anybody does have any problems with their heart, I'd just like to add to so a little bit of advice. Or stroke, the only thing proven to reduce a stroke or a heart attack by 50% within two minutes is cannabis oil, THC, full spectrum. Okay, so if there's anybody out there that is needing help or as such in an emergency, the closest medication is 0.2%, obviously, which would be placebo, um, and cannabis oil is your savior. There will be future medications just containing little uh, capsules of this oil, people to bite them when they're feeling these things, but if you can always carry some with you if you're feeling like you are on the edge um the best thing to do is obviously you have a plant-based diet remove all the fiber the juice to be able to find that balance within and use cannabis oil as your medicine because it is key uh, every single hormone function in your body is regulated by the endocannabinoid system um and if you want to touch it we can touch it in a minute well, but I'll, I'll I, let I, I do i want you to go into it right now because in, in in a probably about five minutes you you can take us through this and this is brilliant folks when when josh explains it what what we're talking about with cannabis is a sacred sacrament santos and i were just talking about this santos totally understands this as well 
cannabis is is a sacred sacrament and used correctly it is it is the the cure-all for the mistakes the indiscretions that we make because we're because we live in the delusion the maya is not an an illusion it is the delusion and we're deluded and the sacrament of cannabis is what helps us to re crucify, remove the delusion. And what does cannabis do? What does it constantly do? Immediately takes you out of beta brain waves and it drops you all the way through, all the way through alpha and theta. And it takes you immediately to delta. And when you're in delta, you're right on the cusp of gamma. The high blue shift waves of gamma, eternal magnetic bliss, and then epsilon, where people have to go, are you still alive? Are you still alive? And so, Josh, take us through this, because it is it is true. Cannabis is a sacred sacrament. One thing that cannabis is actually good for the world, not the earth, um, is it's non-conducive to mind control. So if you go back into the 60s with the sex slaves, you'll find that they were given every single drug under the sun, but not cannabis, because cannabis was allowing the scrambling of the MK MKUltra. Um, but maybe if you, do you guys want to touch it a little bit, and then I'll try and fill in the gaps. Um, maybe Santos, have you got anything to say about it? And then I'll add to it, because well, I know that you're a responsible of it. Well, in, in the Bible, uh, God, the Lord Jehovah, says, burn cannabosm to me five times. I brought this out in my presentations. And five times he says, this is my preferred incense. <laughs> so, so I took that literally. And uh, if, you, if you enjoy any syncretism I've done, anything at all, I can guarantee you it's under the influence of cannabis because I've never done a presentation, interview, <laughs> Anything, anything without cannabis. And every time, every time I've taken that sweet cannabosm, syncretism just pours in. Wow. So that's, that's my key to syncretism. I attribute syncretism only to one thing, not my intelligence, not anything special that cannabis. Thank you very much, O oh Lord, for teaching me to take sweet cannabosm. And this is where they say the mistranslation was sweet cane, which translates to sweet calamus, which was wrong because that's a poisonous plant. Mm -hmm. And the incense comes from the inner sense and the introspection we get from that in that plane of thought. It does take one away and allows one to find the self very easily. Um, and in doing so, stream straight from the ether. You know, pull in the etherical energies and know. Uh, no, no, not necessarily without knowing. It's, it's a oneness, you know. So it's a very important tool um, for the man on his journey. Uh, this is why King Solomon had it, because King Solomon was not a real man. He <laughs> 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 is you and I, the seekers of the balance. Um, but cannabis itself, yes. So it's a neuroconnector. So if someone has seizures, ticks, or anything that vaccine damage has created within the being, obviously vaccine contains mercury and other heavy metals. This breaks the blood-brain barrier. And in doing so, it will get stuck up and lodged in the brain. Now, the reason why people have ticks, seizures, and all the other things that are associated with them is because the brain's electrical, the metal stops the firing of it, and they tick, 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 tick before, and boom. So cannabis is a neuroconnector. So when ingesting cannabis, when someone has this, the neurons bypass the metal block and create a balanced being. So for one medicine to be able to do that is incredible amongst every single medicine itself, especially in the modern day age. But as I said earlier, cannabis regulates every single hormone function within our body the respiratory system, the immune system, the endocrine system, and you can go on with all the 12 systems. And um, when someone's depleted within the body, it's necessary that one ingests cannabis to be able to regulate homeostasis within all the functions in the systems. So it's a master healing tool for any ailment that's out there. It's very, very key that people, if they are ill or have dis-ease, from consumption of non-food products that don't assimilate within the body, 
as we regenerate 10 million cells a second, um, it's very important that we do give life to ourselves that one uses cannabis. Um, I've kind of lost the trail of thought about cannabis, to be honest, because it goes off here. Um, but yeah, it's a very important plant. We have CB1, CB2 receptors. Um, CBD, I'd like to touch because it's being pushed by the modern agenda quickly. Um, CBD only allows the body to release the cannabinoids within. Um, it doesn't actually add any beneficial, uh, anything beneficial to the body. You know, it needs to be the full holistic spectrum plant with THC, CBD, CBN, all the terpenes, absolutely everything in harmonize. Because when you start to take things out of a, a perfected plant, um, this is when the body cannot absorb things, cannot use things and utilize things. Um, and I'd like to say that in the 1500s, cannabis was always used within the church at the altar to alter the mind state. It was burning incense all day, and one would take a, a big sheet over their head and breathe with it. And in doing so, they would find their visions, their sight, their introspection, personal growth, and uh, move on to the next level, you know. But when the globe was brought out, cannabis was changed to wine. And uh, in doing that, the destruction of uh, sheep, <laughs> should I yep. say. And you've got drunkard somnambulant, upside down, yep. spinning Copernicans. Yep. And uh, look at the name uh, Copernicus. It, Nicholas Copernicus literally reads, Satan, Lucifer, Satan. Nick, there you go. Copper, Venus, Lucifer, and Nicus, Satan again. So you've got Nicholas. They're telling you three times, like they do with Galileo Galilei, twice. Galileo Galilei means to turn, to rotate, and to move. So the big joke that he recanted and he said, and yet it moves, that's his name. I mean, Galileo, Galilee. Uh, in fact, in the Strong's Concordance, when Jesus is on the circuit of Galilee, it tells you, honestly, that that's the sun on the ecliptic of the zodiac of the Greeks, because the, ecl the ecliptic turns Galilee, the circuit of Galilee, it's the ecliptic. So here is Galileo Galilei and Nicholas Copernicus, Satan, Lucifer, Satan, <laughs> and the tw turning, twisting, upside down morons that they are, and the whole world has swallowed this uh, Jesuit satanic rot, you know, so, and, and they love it. They will defend it. it I mean, you talk about <laughs> the horizontal stationary uh, planet that we live on, planet, and they will kill you. You know, it's worse than calling them a son of a whore. You know? <laughs> or a jive turkey. Um, you know, and, and to, just to add to that, uh, with Einstein, what is Einstein most famous for? His, his most famous equation that nobody really understands because it's not real. And, but, but they're having a play upon the letters and words at your expense. So E equals MC squared is Einstein equals mind control 2. So oh. Einstein is just mind controlled like you and I, like everybody else from birth. He is just a puppet, just like everybody else. E equals MC squared. It's gibberish. But they're telling you in plain sight that it's mind control, yeah. which is there. It's an as in the bull. It's yeah. a Taurus, because they tell you it spins all these certain directions, etc. But the truth is hidden in the plain sight that once one knows it's a processional reciprocating hyperboloid, that uh, it is really a bull. Uh, and it's not a bull because you're living on the inertia plane of those reciprocations, creating, exactly. creating the plane. T, which is a P lane, which is a light lane, which you're a player in, you're a P layer, which is a layer of light. On this existence, you are a light layer. And uh, yeah. lang language will set all of us free. There's instructions hidden in every single word. Yeah. And those words free us. And those words aren't created by anything. It's created by consciousness. And consciousness is what we are. We are all expressions of the oneness. And this is what atonement is. It is at one mind. And when uh, one finds 
Sorry. Go on, carry on, my brother. Well, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. And you, you've you touched on that at the end of, of every every single little pre presentation you've done today. You've gone back to the self and you've gone back to consciousness. And and again, like, like Santos uh, says, and you un completely understand this because you're the one that taught Colleen and I about uh, the understanding, the hieroglyphics of, of all languages, but in particular the English language. Self, cell, S-E-L, F, cell, the cell, the salt of the, the physical form, and Santos, cell in fr French, cell, S-E-L, cell in French, what does it mean? No, well, um, S-E-L is salt, which is soul, and the self. You, when you say, see, when you say myself, you, it's a French word for salt, which is your salt, myself, you see? And um, interesting how, how it has to do with, you, you, you can still get the soul for, sol, uh, for salt, which is to sell something. And then sell is also to sell something, right? A sellout. Yeah. And so, you get the sign wave of L, S-E-L, mm -hmm. F matter. So you get the sign wave of L in matter, which is the self in the physical as well. Yeah. It's yeah. just two, everything is intertwined perfectly and, and again just so again so that people can understand this where we're coming from this is this is why Josh and I are writing this book on the hieroglyphics of the English language it, and it just has to be it just just has to be done it, it's just it's just fascinating be just wow absorbs all of our time because it's just so amazing God's creation and you look at the word self you need to understand these things s is the sine wave the sine wave. What is the sine wave representing? That is the kundalini rising. What does the kundalini rising represent? That is magnetism. That is the magnetism within us. That's where magnetism is, is in the base of our torso. And that's what magnetism must do. It must sine wave, snake, serpent itself up the super chakra highway so that the Eda serpent and the Pingala serpent are staring into each other's eye, the optic thalamus, and they are locked as one consciousness, and that is called cell or self. And so at the beginning of this, Santo said, what I like to, you know, we need to get rid of these terms, you know, like uh, flat earth and, and especially veganism, vegan. I, 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 don't, I don't want to be limited to a term, but I, I, like the, I like the description of the Garden of Eden diet. Oh my God, we, aren't we just describing the Garden of Eden again? And, and again, the word self. So we've just defined to you that S, the sine wave, the serpent, is the sacred feminine. E, L, L is the light, the light of the world. The electric, masculine, positively charged, that's, that's the father. That's the father and the son. That is the phallic to the womb. The phallic A L to E L, A L to E L, and and that and that's right. And when you when you have the fa the phallic symbol to the womb, you always produce the child, and the child comes comes out in the physical form. And the problem is, is that all we know this physical form as is a delusion, and it, it's not because when you're describing, when both of you were so beautifully describing the sac the holy sacrament. Of, of cannabis, what you're both describing is that what cannabis does is holistic. Everything it does is holistic. It charges and, and heals and repairs all aspects of you. Not, not this one or that one or, or a little bit of this. It does everything because it's holistic, like, like Santos teaches. Holy is to be whole. Clergymen within the, the demonic Catholic Church are the holy men because they're full of holes, like Swiss cheese. That's the delusion of the Maya. It, it's not, that's what's not real about the Maya, is this gray rain curtain of lies. Everywhere it's an upside down truth. It's a lie everywhere. That's the gray rain curtain. And we were discussing this yesterday with like, the, the roof of the third ventricle of the brain is gray. And, and it's described, even in the medical dictionaries, as, as like a, a thin gray veil or curtain. 
And when they're describing in Genesis about, in all, or not just Genesis, but you know, the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita, all of these ancient sacred texts, they're all describing the creation of the firmament, that like God stretched like a veil, the firmament across the sky. And, and so we have this, this veil. And what they've done is they've created this gray rain curtain of hell. And it doesn't touch the earth because they're not creators. And it doesn't touch the sky or heaven, the firmament, because they're not creators. But they're perverters and they're polluters. And this gray layer that hangs above our head is this collection of fucking lies everywhere that teach us to live upside down. And I'll take this back to what Josh said earlier. Think of everything we've talked about today and think about the average person's diet. So they're eating Kentucky Fried Chicken out of a tub while watching The Simpsons. You need to understand that. Watching The Simpsons is ingesting food. That's meta too. When you watch The Simpsons, that's meta. That isn't manna from heaven. That's shit from hell. But you're still eating. And when you're eating a tub of Kentucky Fried Chicken with a bottle of Coke, you are poisoning yourself to a degree that how you, how you make it past that half hour show is beyond me. And then you struggle to 60, 70, 80 years. You are magical beyond description. You are amazing beyond description. And they treat you like shit because you allow them to treat you like shit when you are a holy, holy... We, we are. I, I find this amazing because, because I, I, I constantly find myself so ignorant. It's staggering. But we are the human, the human being... We angels of this creation, we are, the, we are the pinnacle of creation. We are. Everything exists to teach us about ourselves because we are the highest creation there is. So we're taught in the Bible that we have two temples and we need to treat our two temples as they are godly, goodly temples. Right? So everything we need to do comes back to what Santos teaches and what Josh teaches, which is the virtuous life. Just be virtuous. You're in doubt. What should I do right now? Go back and look at the chart of the seven virtues and figure out what is virtuous in this moment and what isn't virtuous in this moment. It all relates back to this, this common sense that exists within us. Let me throw it back to you guys. Sorry, guys, for these rants I'm going on. It's just the simple nature of existence that's been overcomplicated by the left brain. Everything is simple. And uh, like you were saying with the, the cannabis, the, the buy it, the buy S at the end is the buy S, the two sine waves. And it creates that within, you know. Hence why the buy ball is trying to create the two uh, or the reciprocation within the energy field. You know, this is, this is all life. And this is what we're trying to do as mastering the physical, finding the self, because to me, I see that the self is the observer of all of this. Yes. Now we've given a physical to experience all of this, but we must remember not to allow the thoughts and emotions to make our judgment uh, or to make judgment, create an electrical signals within the body and then experience in some sort of uh, feeling. Um, but we have the ability to gain control over our how could I say it? We have an automatic system and we have a system that is not automatic. The um, personality construct, right? This, this yeah, mask but, that we wear. But in the physical, we can actually gain control of, I, I, I'm, I can't find the word right now. For example, our heart beats and we don't have control over it. And our breath, we breathe, but we don't have control over it. I've lost the wording for it, but we can actually, with stillness, find the balance within where we can gain control over every single system within the body. We can release chemicals of bliss. Yes. Instead, we use our thoughts and emotions and we create or we've been programmed to create anxiety, fear, depression. And all they are is electrical signals to the body releasing chemicals that makes us feel a certain way for our nature to express itself so we can overcome these things. In doing that, we can actually find the balance within 
and release chemicals that make us feel bliss, abundance. We have an endocannabinoid system, which means internal, that when we find this spot, we can actually create it from within. How do we do these things? By going through the virtues, by eating right, and becoming perceptive and receptive to the energies that have been left here for us, which Santos has mastered so well with astrology. Because seven planets, S even, they have a massive control over our systems. Now, whether or not we're perceptive or receptive to this depends on how we are. So, for example, we've got the world population thinking that they have a flu or they can catch flu. Now, I know within my being that the flu is not something that you can catch. It's the body purging the things that one consumes. And that is done by the planets. Everybody seems to have it at a similar time of year. And the reason why they're having it is because the planets are doing their job. Um, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to touch on that, Santos, because you are the master. Um, but yeah, so is there anything you'd like to add about the planetaries and the control over our systems? Yeah, for sure. So uh, uh, an individual who is uh, open-minded and, and studied astrology knows that it's the science of electromagnetism and that the planets are regulating the body, not only hourly, but daily and yearly. So it's just like a monthly cycle for a woman. You know, you see the moon doing it. It menstruates at the new moon. So does the woman every month. You see there's an interrelation. And, and that's not just the moon. You know, that's why they call it the moonstruation cycle. There's the Venetian, Venusian uh, cycle. There's the Marshall cycle. There's the yearly solar return. And these planets are, are regulating the ecliptic. And when they find themselves in certain signs, they are energizing that frequency and transmitting it to us. So, for instance, an alchemist knows that they can uh, change or transmute iron into gold when the sun is in Aries or Scorpio. And that's because the sun at that time is in the region of Mars. It is emanating, uh, transmitting that frequency. So they know that that is the time that they can transmute that element because that element is akin to the frequency that the sun is transmitting. So knowing uh, astrology is the best way to understand your mood swings from day to day and, and it, from week to week and why you get uh, depressed or why you are exceedingly happy from one day to another. Yesterday a friend from Miami called me and he said, please, 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 you've got, to, you've got to spend five minutes and see what's going on in the transits. I'm devastated. It's, it's a wreck, a wreck, a wreck. And um, this guy is 58 and his Saturn is on the 28th degree of Capricorn. And yesterday, Saturn in the transits was on the 28th degree of Capricorn. And when it began, two weeks ago, his trouble, Pluto was on the 28th degree of Capricorn. So, uh, and which where, where, where his natal Saturn is. And so, and this was happening in the third and the fourth house. Well, the third house regulates the mind and communication skills. And he said, with his son, communication has broken down totally. He can't even get through to him. And then the fourth house is about your emotional security in your home. So that has been smashed. He lost his partner and his home life is just miserable. So I pointed those out to him and I gave him some remedies and told him how he can, in, uh, he can um, transmute that energy and work with it and showed him some hope that in two weeks' time, when Mercury goes out of retrograde on the 11th of this month and um, Saturn will be out of that say one and a half degree uh, orb with his natal Saturn, that things will start getting better. And sure enough, he will call me and tell me, thank you, yes, things are getting better because that's how it works. I get interaction with people. I ask them to give me feedback. And, um, you know, if they're ever in trouble, just give me a call and I'll see what's going on in the transits. And lo and behold, I always find a reason for the effect. The cause is always there astrologically. Because as you said, 
those planets, not just the moon. Oh, it's, it's great, you know, the police will tell you, oh, on a full moon we get more charges, we get more crazy people. The hospitals will tell you, oh, we're, we're full of accidents on the full moon. So they're already telling you that they, they're astrologers, but their only focus is basically on the sun and the moon because they only see how the sun affects you during the day and how the moon affects you during its phases. But they've left out the five wandering star, uh, the planets called the wandering stars, and their effect, that is five levels of understanding that they are missing, totally, totally writing off because it's either a hocus pocus or it's from the de hocus pocus science, uh, according to the institutions, and the churches will tell you that it's from the devil. So what a great way for, to prevent people from finding the cure and the source and the cause of all things going on on the earth, which is the theatre. Wow. The mind and the mind is attached to these things, and this is why here we can project the things that are coming towards us by thought. So we need to overcome the things in our reality that we're kind of projecting from self as our existence here, because um, you know our consciousness is always trying to find a way to uh, break the bound Aries, the bound Aries. Um, and, you know, these things do happen to us because of the planets. But when we are virtuous, again, I'd like to touch the virtues again. Um, and we don't attach to these things. We can see a clean level of life in a standard planets for what they are and do not let the thought and emotion create and stay still and be happy within our being, you know. And then this, this these key. are just such key words, folks. And, and boundaries are bind Aries, and th this is this is the journey of man. We we're the number six, and everybody gets their their noses bent out of joint when they hear you know six 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 or the number six, and six is so even though it is such a holy number, it is such a beautiful number. Six is the journey of man. It's the sixth chakra. It's the Ajna. It is the is the illumination of the sun, the you know the golden sun within us, which is emergent light, which is real life real life mm -hmm. is emergent it comes from within and so that is the number six six and six is 12 12 is the completion that surrounds the one the one jesus christ on his journey surrounded by his his uh, 12 disc eyeballs uh or the or the optic thalamus the third ventricle of the brain surrounded by the the 12 um um cranial nerves. Uh, I mean, all of this is just symbolic, symbolic, and it's all symbology. But what I wanted to just quickly interject, I know this is kind of heady stuff, but, but I, I really want to share this for everyone, for them to really contemplate this, listen to this again and again, and then really contemplate this. What Santos was just talking to you, which was brought to him by all of the brilliance of what Josh was talking about through astrology, is that Santos is talking everything essentially is all about the ecliptic, okay? So the, the ecliptic is this, is this pattern that, that the journey of the son of God. So we are, this, we are the son of God. We're the son of the son. And, and so our journey is upon this, uh, this uh, ecliptic. Uh, so we have this ecliptic journey of man. And what I want everyone to just kind of visualize with inside of them is that that's your reality. What is happening here is, is very important and it, it's, uh, it's very real. This is all very, very real. But all of what happens here happens secondarily to what is happening inside of you on your ecliptic path. So the ecliptic is in you. So for sure, it's up there in the sky. And it's up there in the sky because everything is an allegory for the human body, for the temple of the body and the mind. And the, so the ecliptic path of the sun, which we can literally see in, in the sky, is actually happening within you. And how you react to these forces of the seven planetary bodies that are affecting the ride the, the sea ride, <laughs> the Christ ride, um, 
uh, you know, and he grabs the B ride and takes her to the G room. But that that sacred ride on the ecliptic in, inside of us, that how how we respond to the effects of these luminaries within us, these the seven planetary bodies within us, determines what we look like, determines what we sound like, determines what how we live. It determines our actions, it determines our thoughts, it determines our words, and it determines the outcomes here in the physical. So this is very real. Like Santo says, it is not, it is absolutely not an illusion. This is real, but it is secondarily real. And what I mean by that is what's primarily happening is happening inside of you that you don't see. But that's where everything is. That's who you are. And all of this is this sacred journey within you. And it all leads from the Muladhakra, number one, the base root chakra. And it all leads in the body to the sixth ajna, the sixth, uh, third eye chakra that elevates, illuminates to the crown chakra and then takes you to a whole another holy world. There are seven virtuous levels of energy above us. Seven virtues above us. So it's seven to get to the crown chakra through the physical plane, but then there's seven virtuous heavenly energies above that. You, we've got so much to do. We have so much to experience, and it transcends physical, the physical body and physical thoughts. You exist. Consciousness, soul exists. It doesn't die. It goes on and on and on. So you choose by your actions to be a slave, and you go around and around and around and around the samsara, the great wheel of the physical plane. Why? Because you don't realize that the sine wave is inside of you, that the ecliptic is inside of you, that everything is happening inside of you. So like Josh says and Santos teaches, when we still the mind, when we go in by meditation, and when we calm ourselves, and when we have sans judgment, leave the judgment to one who comes later. Leave the judgment to thy father. Take the load off Fanny and put the load right on me. Put the load on God. And and I wanted to bring this up before before we concluded today because because this is so important to be able to 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 believe in what I just shared with everyone that this ecliptic plane that that we see in the sky that Santos teaches so brilliantly and Josh teaches so brilliantly that it exists within you. It takes trust. It takes trust. There's a level, there's a measure of trust. It's like um, the virtuous, the penitent man must take that first step. And he cannot see the bottom of the chasm, has no idea if he's heading to a precipitous fall. But he must take that first step. And that first step is, is not blind faith. It is knowing it comes from gnosis. It comes from knowledge. It comes from knowing. You take that first step not out of fear. You take that first step out of damn rights. Damn rights I'm taking that first step because my place is in heaven at the right hand side of thy father. And I am not afraid by what I can't see. Fear is what limits us. And what it limits us to is this hellish existence of around and around and around and around and around and around and around, and around that fucking wheel. That's not you. But that's what you will experience. Belief. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Josh. I was to say that the word itself, belief, is B lie F, which is a lie straight in the matter. And to know is the K now which is K is 11, which is L even, which is perfect balance. That's why after 11, you become T twa, twa, entwined with the L, the two Ls. But to know is the K now, which is balance now. And this means you are self because you recognize that you are just the observer here. Reverse it to get the truth. It's one K, the one balanced mind. So belief itself, scripted written out through consciousness is a lie in matter because beliefs are individual in this dualistic world and they're just thoughts it's not knowing so just as you said the most powerful thing is to know because knowingness is not belief it's, it's knowing <laughs> no. 
what's the heart of Santos's syncretism? This is this is the beauty. I, I just have I have tears welling up inside of me because this is all so beautiful, guys. And and this is so when, when you're thinking about Santos Bonacci um, as just some other person within the truth movement, it's just he's, you know like uh, I, I like this guy because he's got some good stuff, and, and I like that guy. And San, yeah, Santos, he's got his thing, he does that whole God thing, and yeah, I, I like some of that stuff as well. No, 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 there's, there's, there's Josh and Santos, which is the holistic understanding of all things, and then there's the other people in the truth movement, and it's their choice to be bit players. It's their choice to give you a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, for whatever reason they wanna do. But that's the reality of the truth movement. Truth is holistic, is whole. To become holy, you have to become whole. One, what is syncretism? It is the, the K, it is the seeking of balance to find the monadic circle, the monadic point. That, that point in space where everything else fades away. And there, there is no surrounding circle and there is no dot. There just is. There just is. And that is the canal, the cano, the gnosis in the now, in the moment of knowingness. And that's what Santos teaches. That's what syncretism is. So, so when I'm describing that everything that Santos knows about astrology and teaches about astrology, the thing that's so incredible is that he's also telling you, but that's what's happening inside of you. You need to understand what you see there and by learning what's happening up there is what's happening within you. And you don't become a victim to this. You become the controller of this. And so like Santo says, that when we do this by raising these seminal fluids within us, Garden of Eden, we're right back to the Garden of Eden again, and we raise these seminal fluids within us, then what does Santos teach when, when we actually raise the chrism oil home? That the Christ doesn't leave us. He becomes the 13th cranial nerve located here at the colostrum, the place where cholesterol is created, right? Colostrum creates all the corpuscles in the body, which gives life to, to the cells, which gives life to blood. It's the life of everything. What's located right above the colostrum at the back of your head? The mercy seat of God. And that's going to become the 13th cranial nerve. And when you have, when you illuminate the 13th, when you manufacture and when you emerge, when you create life from within you, when you create that 13th cranial nerve, that's it. You are the Bodhisattva. You are the Buddha. You are now in that middle place and you are living simultaneously between two points. That's why we exist. That's why we fell from grace. That's why we fell from the singularity in the beginning of, of just knowing God in heaven to this duality, this endless polarity of infinite dualities. It's to unite these two worlds. It is so beautiful. And this is, this is what Santos teaches. He spent his life. I said, what did I say to you yesterday? I said that the measure of a man is is the the breadth of his his life work and and i said you know what santos you you have already and you're only coming up to 57 you've already left monstrous footprints uh on this on this terra firma um because of, of what you created and josh who's absolutely brilliant and a numbskull like myself we, we just absolutely penitently bow before, before the syncretism and the syncretic principle and the method because it is the, it is the ultimate holy sacrament. It, it ties everything together into one. And this is what you need to do, folks. So th th and it doesn't come for 1995 in a package or a pill and, and a monthly newsletter. Santos does all of this for, for free. If you want to help him out, if you want to do this and you want to do, you're free to do those things. But he's providing you the truth of truth for free. And if you know anything about Josh X, that's who Josh is. How can I get this information to the world for free?
When you go to other YouTube channels that are selling bits and pieces of information, but you know what? The first hour, yeah, it wasn't that good. But the second hour, I'm telling you, yeah, it's 1995. And that's, that's where all the goodies in that second. Okay. Jesus Christ. If you literally have the truth, would you, would you say to somebody, yeah, but, you know, but the real good stuff is 1990. Come on. The truth will set you free in every way, shape, or form. And the, I, I want to say one thing here as well that may help spark some minds out there because I know both of you are very well versed within uh, all the paradigms of the legalese, the law, and everything. That The ultimate truth is that you cannot purchase anything and own it. There's land out there. Addresses keep you in the system. If you have anything to do with God, you should go out there, find your family, claim some land, plant your seeds, live virtuously, throw out the money changers, and be peaceful. Find the self and enjoy your existence here while mastering every single element that you can possibly. You know, because Contracts are called contracts for a reason, and that reason is for you to see that anything signed with your signature is a sign of nature, and you are just doing the opposite of what God's will is, you know. Do not pay for anything. Make things happen. Grow, learn, love, live, and guide, and be the light that shines upon the world because you cannot change anybody's will. Will and love are the only laws in the universe and unfortunately is controlled by fear. It's a negative vibration. Together, everybody can change this paradigm. Don't give in to fear because the corporations aren't real. They're figments of your imagination that are controlling you and you are governed in the mental. Hence why there's a governed mental system out there. Everything is free. Everything is free. The food that you consume should be grown from the earth for free. But we have people going to work, not educating their children, and leaving their children to a system that's controlling them through commerce and only bringing them up to understand commerce. Commerce is the devil, as the Lego movie explains. El ego is Lego. And we should not be exchanging with these people. And together we will find peace and balance out there. And all you need to do is not give in to fear, learn to love and trust nature. It's very basic. It's very simple. It's very healing. And just by being still with nature, I promise you, self will rise. You will find the observer within and the mind will quiet down and everybody will be happy. And the thing that you guys are bring and brought to the world is incredible. And I know for a fact that my being was allowed to express itself through the education that you've passed down to me. And uh, even though it is of the world, it's very important. I love you both very much. Likewise. Thank you, Josh. That, very that's nice. so beautiful. Santos, over to you with, uh, with your thoughts on, on all of this and all the comments we made about syncretism and about... Um, uh, your work. Yeah, know who you are. That's the uh, the maxim of the mystery schools. Know thyself and you will know all the gods within and without and how they work and how the universe works. This system is designed to override your consciousness with programs. They tell you, you know, there's uh, MTV teaches little children to get sexy real quick. So what they're doing now is exchanging DNA when they're in their teens now. You know, it's, it's more than likely that most girls who used to be virgins by the time they were married, they've had 30 or 40 partners before they're in their mid-20s, right? And, and guys, same thing. And what they've done is they've exchanged all this DNA and kept it in their body because you can't get rid of it. All of them. So all of those people have gone on their merry way, but their vibrations now as they go out into the world, whatever they do, crimes and all kinds of sinful, lustful actions, always come back and reflect on you now because you've listened to the program. It's like a new computer. A new computer works so well 
you see? But when, it's, when a virus is on it, it slows down. And this is why they want little children to get out and be promiscuous and have a bit of experiment and, you know, exchange DNA with all these sexy people that you think are so cute and bring them home and have some sex and then send them off their way. You're not sending them off their way. You're keeping them for ever. So why I said know thyself is people who know themselves don't do this. You know, they keep integrity. They keep virtue. They resist that temptation to, to hear the, 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 the demonic teachings calling them. It might be also with drugs and alcohol, you know. And, and showing images of people having fun and alcohol is always on the table. It's always the, the key denominator, you know, in, in this fun celebration time. It's, it's not fun. It's pleasure and pain. When you're dealing in the world of pleasure and pain, you get no bliss. If you want one thing, it's bliss. If you want two things, it's pleasure and pain. You cannot pleasure yourself with not experiencing the aftermath of abundant pain. To the degree in which you, sought, you, you look for the pleasure, you will pamper yourself with pain. So, you know, let's not go out and look for sense gratification and, and fleeting pleasures. Let's build a lasting temple, the soul of man. Build a lasting temple based on virtue, principles, honour, dignity, uh, integrity and um, forbearance and all the good things. So know thyself, that is the most important key thing. When you know yourself, you know that you are unlimited and you are God and you are unconditioned and you don't have to accept these conditions. Like you said, Josh, um, uh, paying for things and buying food and, and making the system perpetuate itself in, in all its grossness uh, we can get out of Babylon the Great before it's too late and share in her sins. So that's my that's been my call all the time. That's all I want. I don't necessarily uh, want anything from people other than from them to be um, leaders. You know, I don't look for followers like some people are doing, entertaining people on their channels, asking them for money and donations and gimme, gimme, gimme. No, 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 no. I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm the one giving, and that's what we should be. A solar hero is a giver, not a taker. And we have to be solar heroes, always giving first. To serve, you will be served. If you do not serve first, you will never be served. So, know thyself, that's it. It's a penal system, it's all pen, pen all. That's all it is. You've seen it in the movies as children. The devil had a piece of paper. People just need to remove the fear. And that's all that's keeping everybody to this work, that's removing everybody from time, which is keeping everybody busy in busyness. People need to just break away from fear. And that's all it is. I promise everybody out there that there is not a piece of paper that can harm you. <laughs> you are free. It is your belief that you are bound. Work is war with decay as the world is war with L in form. The earth is not the world. Words carry measure, but they are war with your form and you must understand what you speak as you create, as you speak. So it's very important. I just love, I would just love everybody in, 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 in the level of awareness to be able to grow and to be able to realize that the system is all pen. And the, the sentences or the prison sentences is because of what you spoke. You have the right to remain silent in any situation, and that is righteous. You know, anything right is righteous, and that's right, which is correct. Um, so, free yourself. Try to experience truth, because it's just going to set you free. And I, I, in my journey right now, I'm looking to create something where beings can come and learn, or or, or see and be guided that the earth is your home and uh, you do not need to pay for anything so um yeah there's, there's lots more from us and i hope to be able to intertwine with your energies more um but uh, life is wonderful it's just everybody's perception and don't be trapped by lord business never be trapped by lord business wow 
You guys are amazing. And, and I promise everyone that... One thing, to, one more thing I'd like to ask, actually, you guys, because this has just been ringing around my being for a long time, and I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, everywhere we look, for example, we have chemtrails, yeah? They're everywhere. In every city, every country. But we know every single country is a registered business on Company's House, for example, yeah? All banks. So... Um, and we know that the earth is not necessarily uh, been given to us as we know that the world of uh, material out there, we have to find a way ourselves. If we just had a couple of like-minded beings, for example, who had the ability to travel or fly and experience what's actually out here, within my being there's something so strong that says this is just commercial land. Everybody's so afraid to leave this land and to find beings and go and travel, hence like the Moana film out there, you know. Um, I personally have this strong feeling that, that there's, there's lots and lots and lots of places for us to exist. Um, but we're existing in commercial land owned by busyness, you know. And we still could not create contracts and live happily here, but I'm sure... There's a place on this wonderful plane of existence that we can find, um, and it's not going to be on the map, you know. Uh, yeah, if if you if again if people, <laughs> the globe lie itself tells you that they can get away with anything. If you think by looking at one of their maps, that's all there is. Take a good look at the southern, the so-called southern hemisphere of their globe model, and how little land there there is there. Um, yeah, maybe, just maybe, there are continents the size of America, where have we heard that before, um, that exist in the Indian Ocean itself. But when's the last time you had the time, the money, and, and a vessel to, you know, safely go about your, your, your uh, journey and discover land in the Indian Ocean? Yeah, I, I haven't had a lot of the money, the time, or the opportunity to do that. So I really don't know if there's land in the Indian Ocean, and that's how it is. And then you die at 60, and life sucks, and it's all fucked, and around, around, around the wheel you go. Never once, never once, you know, getting a giant plastic bag and filling it with pop bottles and floating uh, and discovering where, where you live, discovering everything about where you live. We don't do that. And they, and they teach us. What do they do? Get married quickly, quickly, with a girl from your town. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Same color. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Have kids. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, do all of these things. And have a happy life. Get a mortgage. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, you'll never, never travel. Never be free. Never, never learn another culture. Never experience, um, you know, the divinity of, of every other culture that exists on, on this perfect plane. Um, it, it's, it's staggering and we all, we allow it all to exist. And, you know, when Santos was just, uh, saying his beautiful piece there, you know, one of the things, uh, again, just tying this all back into the garden of Eden, Santos said, you know, and of course, you know, it is an allegory, but, but inside of us, it's, it's, it's really real. Like it's really real because, because our sacred body and our sacred mind are temples and they are. The garden, they are the Garden of Eden. They make up the Garden of Eden. And, and so it was through Santos that, that we learned this, this process of doing sex right. So like everything, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things. What do you think we've been taught from birth about sex? Well, it's been demonized into a four-letter word. Last time I checked it, has three letters. And they're all incredibly beautiful letters. And so, thanks to Santos, Kaliwag and I practice what, what we call um, sacred sex or white tantric sex. And here's, here's the thing. I would never, never, ever, 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 ever again allow myself to even come close to an outward ejaculation. Um, and and any time I've even come close to one, uh, afterwards, I, I just don't feel... At, at peace with myself and that's that's not having one that's just coming close because I let the monster uh, too close to um, you know to coming out of the out of the shoe I don't want to do that I want to control the beast I want to be in control of the goal the orgasm and and when you do this there well, like Santos also teaches there is there's no beginning and there's no end to lovemaking 
it, it just becomes this seamless ecliptic sine wave uh, pattern between you and your, your loved, beloved spouse um, that you share together. And like Santo says, when you don't ejaculate outwards, you don't forget the love that you create when the Ida serpent and the Pingala serpent are staring each other in the eye, the optic thalamus, um, you don't forget. And when you start up again in the, the sacred act, you're starting at that point. You go back to that point. But when you ejaculate outwards and you send the beautiful Mary spiraling out of control at a, at a thousand miles an hour until bing, you get that three seconds of, of pleasure, bing, because it hits the crown of, of the skull. She's knocked senseless. She's knocked senseless, falls all the way back down to the Muladhara and doesn't remember a thing. That's our life. Out of control, out of balance, out of harmony, out of love. We don't know the first thing about, about what love truly is because we don't know the first thing about self. To give. You receive when you give. It, it just naturally happens. Like Colleen and I always teach on the breakfast time chats. The rewards are built in to the work. The rewards are built into the work. When you do the work, which is service to God's creation, the rewards are built in. You don't have to go looking for them. They're built in. The show has just been absolutely amazing. And I really, really am, am hoping that this will be a continual experience between uh, the three of us, just for me to get Josh and Santos together. And <clears throat> I really believe through this trinity that, that we, we can and that we will change the world. And it may, it may be one mind at a time, but we, we will change the world through this, the, this, this righteousness and these, this right thinking of the right brain. So I'm just going to pass it over to both of you um, to close things off. And I want to say I love you both so much. I promise to Santos to stop hugging him so much. And, um, and I'm going to pass it over to you, say your goodbyes, and thank you both so much. Um, I'd just like to add quickly with the vegan dogs that um, on my journey, I've been helping heal many beings and animals as such, and um, animals that have been close to death and being put down by a, by a system of um, veterinaries that don't know anything, as in the doctors, don't know anything as well with the, uh, the pharmaceutical industries. Um, that a plant-based diet will reverse um, ailments within animals such as dogs that are primarily believed to be meat eaters and they can have a lifespan of around about 30 years uh, on a plant-based diet um, and um, the same with, uh, with men, the same with cats, an average life expectancy of a, a cat Felis sylvestris uh, as around about 15 years, but they've managed to extend life up to 30 odd years with uh, plant based diet on a cat. So, just because these predators have been called predators because primarily they've had to scavenge because the fruit bearing trees aren't here for them anymore. Um, that the things that heal the body mind in all sentient life is the fruit bearing seed fruit. <laughs> but um, it's been a pleasure talking to you both and uh, being able to express um, on here. And um, I'd love to do it again with you guys at any time that you're available. Um, but yeah, peace and love to all beings and uh, oneness is within us all. I love you all. Santos. Thank you, Josh. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to encourage folks to think about everything they do. Like that's what caused uh, Charlie and Colleen to do as I did with my dog, make them vegan. Why would you unconsciously support the death and murder industry? As Tolstoy once said, as long as there are abattoirs, there will be battlefields. No vegans are out there in, in wars killing other people of different colors. Uh, once you become vegan, uh, you become yourself. As long as you're eating animals, you will never know yourself, period. Uh, and one more thing I'd like to add. If you enjoy my syncretism at all, maybe you don't, doesn't matter, it's none of my business. But if you do, it's thanks to veganism. Because when I went vegan, syncretism came.
came to me. So two things I attribute to syncretism. Veganism and cannabis. Long live both of those. Thank you very much. And again, thank you to, to uh, both of my um, golden, absolutely golden auric guests. Um, they are special beyond description. I love them both beyond description. And uh, they are truth beyond uh, what we can conceive. And I appreciate this so very much. And I'll, I'll just end it with this. Remember when Josh and Santos, when they use the word vegan, this is not going to, to Whole Foods and buying processed foods. If you're buying processed foods, it isn't vegan. It isn't vegan at all, folks. And um, what you need to do is get raw. Oh, man, raw. And, um, you know, eventually we can get ourselves to breatharians. We absolutely can. Santos knows. Um, we're, all three of us are, are wanting to get to that, to that point of just only consuming the, the metta, the manna from heaven. Uh, which we can do. So please uh, really open your minds to this. And uh, thank you to my beautiful guests again. Josh? Fruit, juice, water, breatharian. Those stages need to be accomplished and okay. you will find the lustful nature for the experience of food is not needed. And uh, I can personally say that, you know. So yeah, okay. love you both. Love you, you. love you both, love you all. Thank you for, to everyone for all of your love and support for, for all of us. And we will see you again with another show as soon as I can find the time to do one. Love you and thanks to my wonderful guests. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.